hello you're welcome to my tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to talk about the concept of nested summations so in the last year take a look at the summation and multiplication formula and so if you have not taken a look at that video please i'll suggest you take a look at that video before coming to this one we are going to consider these formulas right here so looking at here we have the first summation which suggests to us that we have a for loop since we said that in the last tutorial then in this one too we have another summation which suggests to us that we have another for loop so in all we have two for loops okay but what you should look out for when you have such a question is the indexes which is the i and the j so whenever you have any formula of this sort and then you see i running from one to n j running from one to n this is suggest to you that we have a nested for loop because most of the time not always but most of the time it is only in nested loops that we use different variables so let's say we're going to break this formula down so to begin with we have the, we are going to write the first for loop which will be this one and then inside this for loop we are going to write another for loop which exists inside the main for loop okay so we are going to begin by writing the pseudo code for this formula and then we we'll also implement it in matlab so to begin with the pseudo code we are going to begin with two um, variables which are going to hold the summation for the for the two sum that we have okay and then we are going to call those summations s1 and we initialize it to zero and then s2 s2 we also initialize that one two to zero then what we have you can see we have the first for loop which is for i equals one to n and then in that for loop let me end this one and for so in this for loop we have another for loop okay so this is the nested for loop which is another summation of the xj so we have for for j equals one to n let me first end the for so i'm going to end for and then in this loop what what are we actually doing okay so what we are doing is we have the summation of what xj so we can say the s1 which is our first variable which is going to hold our sum we say s1 is equal to s1 plus xj this loop here will bring us the whole sum in the summation from j equals 1 to n and then inside this loop you can see after this loop here we have the two being added to the sum okay and now as you can see we have the sum being stored in s1 because this loop is going to loop around and then bring us the sum from the summation of xj this whole thing will be contained in our s1 but you can see we have two added to whatever we have or the summation so which is which doesn't belong to the loop okay so because of this we come outside of the loop and then we add um s1 is equal to s1 plus 2 so now we are going to do another summation which will be for the main loop so let me write it and now explain further so i can say s2 is equal to s2 plus s1 okay so this will be the simple uh, pseudo code to implement this so let me explain how this this is going to work since we have two summations we first declare two variables the s1 and then the s2 to hold the total summation and then because we have two um summations and then one is inside one we are going to have a nested loop okay so because of that we have the first for loop which is from right here and then the second for loop so inside the second we complete everything here we have to complete everything in the second for loop before we proceed to the first for loop from here we say keep summing the indexes of what m um, xj so this will do it until it has the whole summation of what xj and then when this one ends we now see that inside this main for loop here we have the two being added to the summation which is our s1 now so we add that two to s1 so we say s1 is equal to s1 plus two whatever value s1 is we just add two to it and then we store it back into s1 but we are not done yet so as you can see we have completed everything here but you can see that everything there also goes into another loop okay so we we are summing everything here from i equals one towards n that summation will be carried in s2 so now we say s2 is equal to s2 plus s1 so we are summing everything that s1 is from i equals one towards n so this is a simple way to implement this in 
the studio code so now let's see how we can write this in matlab so i have a matlab up and running and i'm going to create a new script and then i'm just going to save it so you are going to create a vector x pair formula which we will draw the element of the xj from okay let me first declare a vector x which is equal to some arbitrary numbers okay so i think these numbers will be enough and 90 so per formula since we had two summations we are going to have the first uh, variable holding our first sum and then the second variable holding our second sum so we say s1 is equal to zero and then we say s2 s2 to also be equal to a zero so once this is done we proceed to the loop so we say for for i equals one two so now since we are considering um our n to be the length of the vector x or the number of elements in the vector x we say length of x okay so i've said this several times this will return the number of elements which exist in x so let me end this loop and then inside it we have another for loop. so for j equals one to also the length of x okay let me end this one to pair our formula we had summation of what xj okay so that's exactly what you are going to you are going to draw the elements of x and then sum them together so because of this we say s1 is equal to s1 plus x and then we access the element or individual element from the x vector we say j Okay, so this will continue summing the element, but outside of this loop per our formula, you can see that we have two adding to the sum that we already have. So because of this, we come outside of the loop, and then we say s s1 is equal to s1 plus 2. So we are adding that to which was added to it from the second for loop, but we are not done. We are supposed to also go around this, the whole summation for s s2 so because of this we say s2 is equal to s2 plus s1 what this means is that s2 will be holding the total summation okay so let us display what we have in s2 of course we can use this function we say s2 so let's run this code and see what we get okay so Per the numbers that we have, you can see we have this as our answer. So this is how to easily implement a nested summation. So whenever you have anything of this sort, first check out if you have um, the i and the j, and then this should suggest to you that you have a nested loop, and then also check out for the brackets. Okay, so this one really suggested to us that we had a nested loop. Thank you for watching, and if if you like the video and it really helped you. Please subscribe to my channel and also like the video. Don't forget to share it with friends.